Hello and welcome to the first edition of Construction Toy Dude, a series in which I will be reviewing plastic block construction toys from various manufacturers. Today we will be looking at this, the town camper set made by the Korean company, South Korean, Oxford. Uh, this set serial number can be seen there. And we also get a bright picture of what the finished product looks like. The back of the box is very similar to the Lego boxes. You have story panels uh, advertising the different features of the set. You can also see that inside pieces are separated into numbered bags uh, to help with building. Uh, this is again what LEGO do in their sets. It is very useful and it's good to see that Oxford have decided to copy that. Next we shall look at, at the instructions. A big glossy booklet um, good quality paper, stapled in the bindings. Inside, instructions are step by step, very similar again to Lego instructions, easy to follow, and detailed diagrams as needed. Right, let's start putting this set together. Take the pieces out of the bags first and let's see what we have. Okay, so I have laid out the pieces in the bags marked one. These will make up the vehicle and the caravan plus accessories. Looking at the pieces, they are of good quality plastic. They do not flex easily. They are of similar design to Lego pieces. Uh, apart from on the larger pieces, you have a hollowed out stud. This may be to differentiate them just a little bit from Lego. The only pieces in which quality difference is noticeable is the brighter coloured pieces. They are of a paler um, colour plus a sort of weaker shine than actual Lego pieces. Again, it doesn't show up too well on the camera, but uh, if you were to see this next to a uh, Lego piece of similar shape and colour, you could tell the difference. The wheels for the car caravan and the vehicle which pull it are not rubber, they are solid plastic. Lego would have rubber tyres. Um, this is probably to reduce on cost for the set. Uh, it is not as good as having actual rubber tyres. The wheels are all in one, you don't have to assemble them in any way. Strangely, the bicycle accessory does have rubber tyres on the wheels. Now, the bike is interesting in that it is articulated at the front. The handlebars move the front wheel. Lego does not have this and here we have an example of a construction toy design which is superior to Legos. I would choose this bike over a Lego piece of the same nature because of this articulation. 
Another piece of interest is this one here, which is a roof piece. Uh, it is used to make up the roof on the caravan and similar shaped pieces are used to make up the bonnet on the 4x4 which tows the caravan. Lego would have this piece in one moulding. Here it is actually in two. You remove the white security piece and you will see here we are, there are two halves which sit side by side when attached to the model. This is either to boost the parts count that they can stick on the side of the packet and, or it is cheaper to produce two halves than one whole piece. I am unsure which. We also have sprues of hand accessories for the minifigures. We have a camera at one end. Turn it over what I assume are two smartphones and a tablet. These are fair quality, not much detail. Um, they add to the play value and well, not much more I can say about them. Colour range in the parts is good. We have greens, yellows, reds, whites, blacks of course, and translucent pieces. We have specialist pieces such as these steps which go onto the caravan. A cheaper Lego imitators do not have so many specialist pieces and they will also cut back on the number of translucent parts uh, included. They also do not make sets with such a large variety of colour. Um, because if you only have to use two colours of plastic in your set, obviously you can make them for a lot less and reap a larger profit margin. Now we shall put together the caravan and the vehicle that pulls it and after that I will show you the two and we shall go through them. Now we shall first look at the minifigures included. We get three, two female and one male. They are the same size as Lego minifigures and um, pretty much the same design with detachable heads and legs and wigs. The legs are slightly different shaped to Lego minifigures and that's about the main difference. On the back of the legs there are no round holes, their holes are square and if you take apart a minifigure I should have prepared one earlier. You will see that the arrangement for attaching the legs onto the body is one solid block shape rather than two uh, studs as in the Lego system. Quality wise, the minifigures are pretty good. The plastic is decent. Um, the design is fine, I don't see anything wrong with it. Printing is slightly off. If you can see on this female, the printing on her top is slightly smudged. Doesn't show up that well on camera, unfortunately, but we shall hopefully be getting a better camera as the series progresses. Um, the minifigures, I think, are perfectly decent and I am happy with their quality. During building, I want to take this opportunity to show you the stickers which come to apply to the 
finished models. Lego also includes sticker sheets uh, more and more in their sets as a cheaper alternative to printing designs straight onto the bricks. Um, they are not as nice as printed bricks but uh, here we have another company which does exactly the same thing as Lego. Um, we have the number plates, one for the 4x4 which pulls a caravan, one for the rear of the caravan, uh, two television stickers to put in the caravan and this wooden board sticker which I shall find a home for as we go along. These teepees go on the side of the caravan as do the serial numbers and the legend town camp. I have applied the sticker for the number plate to the front of the 4x4 as per the instructions. The stickers are more papery than you would find in Lego sets. They are also less glossy. This would make them less water resistant so when children are playing with the toys outside the stickers might be damaged faster than they would on Lego toys. Before I build up the caravan any further I want to show you some details of the interior. There are a good few accessories including opening drawers, a wee coffee machine in the corner and the mug comes in and out, saucepans and a sticker representing a television. There is also a opening cupboard which could also be a microwave I'm guessing. These all add to the play value of the set and also you would not find them in other imitators of Lego. They would not have as many details or additional features. And here we have the finished caravan and the finished vehicle which pulls it, a 4x4. I will first show you the finished vehicle. It attaches onto the caravan by a ball joint. They fit together nice and easily and have good uh, versatility for when the vehicle is pulling the caravan. The vehicle itself is a good size. The roof is removable. And some other parts are removable along with the roof. That shouldn't really happen. Inside there is space for two minifigures. One to sit at the wheel driving and one to sit behind. Like thus. This is an improvement on Lego vehicles where you can often only fit one person inside. The bike I talked about earlier fits onto the roof of the 4x4, although because the white pieces which go into making up the roof are not an all-in-one moulding. The bike doesn't fit as secure as it could had the roof been made in an all-in-one moulding. I found a home for the wooden effect stickers from earlier. They fit on the top of these 
uh, box accessories, which are a 2x2 two two block with a flat 2x2 two two tile on top. Moving on to the caravan, the roof and one side swing up to allow access for the minifigures. can fit two minifigures inside, seated very comfortably. On top there is a roof rack. Uh, there are two rucksacks which can be carried here and also fit onto the minifigures. When the caravan is being towed, this little flap is in the horizontal position. Swing it down to vertical and it gives stability for when the caravan is being played with stationary. The vehicle pulls along the caravan very nicely. There are no issues with the two becoming separated during towing. The minifigures fit on the bicycle nice and easily and securely, which is also important. We even get a little ghetto blaster accessory. We shall now move on to other parts of the set and see what the bags labelled to make up. I have now laid out the pieces in the bags marked to. These will make up a tent as well as a camping ground for the minifigures to use. Um, again, there is a good range of colours. There are also plant pieces. The flower heads come on a plastic sprue, two different colours. There is a scooter. Uh, again, like with the bike, the front is articulated. There is also a grey plastic sprue of accessories for the minifigures. Because these are moulded all in one, uh, the design is not great on the oil lamp. Uh, I do not know what the thing on the right is. There is a hand tool, which is fine, and also a pair of binoculars. Strangest of all, there is also a revolver. That does add to play value for boys and I'm sure some girls would like it too. We shall now put together, or rather I shall put together, the pieces and I shall show you the final product. The Oxford bricks stick together very well. There is no wobble, uh, no looseness. They don't fit quite as snugly as Lego bricks but you don't have any worries about them coming apart uh, or falling apart during play, which you do with some LEGO imitators. And here we have the finished set. There's the tent and along with a tree and you get this cooking area with a table, stools, some flowers, uh, a mushroom, a campfire, and you also get these, I guess they're meant to be marshmallows on sticks for the minifigures to toast. Very large marshmallows and very grey, probably not very tasty. 
we see a flaw in design with the, the tent as the sides do not reach the floor. There is a gap, if you can see there. This can be easily remedied by building up this piece here by putting another flat 1x8 underneath this blue strip we would close up the gap. This tree is very fragile. Uh, every time I seem to knock up against it, bits fall off. It is also a fiddly build for children. Um, parents would definitely need to help with the tree. Overall though, I am very happy with this set. Uh, especially the 4x4, which is uh, a great design. Very happy with the fact you can fit two minifigures inside. Uh, the Oxford minifigures themselves, they're pretty decent. Although a recent court victory by LEGO over the company Bestlock may mean that LEGO imitators will have to change their minifigures to make them less similar to Legos or face legal proceedings. Value for money wise, this set is good. I bought it for $11.99 on special offer. Usually it retails for $19.99 uh, and is currently on offer for $16.99. The only place that stocks Oxford toy sets on the British High Street is the Smith's toy store chain. They import directly from Oxford. If elsewhere, you will probably have to buy Oxford products online via eBay or other websites. Oxford do not have their own online shop which is a shame because I would like to buy more of their products, especially from ranges which are not available from Smiths. I would give this set a 4.5 for quality out of 5. 5 out of 5 for play value. I think children would have a fantastic time with this set. I would have done when I was younger and so would my sister. Um, design wise, 4. There are some good pieces of design. Um, some pieces where more thought would have been helpful, including on this tent. Um, but overall, the quality is decent. Um, value for money, I would say. The price I paid for it, 5 out of 5. Regular retail price, probably 4 out of 5. I hope you have enjoyed this video. It is my first attempt at a review. And if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them. No trolls though, please. Any trolls will be deleted and I will hopefully bring a much better video in the near future. Thank you for watching.